This is part two of making a scrapbook using GIMP. Now we need to go to a web page to get some templates. This tutorial is going to be on templates. So I'll open up a, a web page. That's that one there. It's a very good web page. You can download these templates. Some are in grey and others are in uh, colour templates. So you just scroll down and see the templates you want. Let's say uh, choose one here. That one's a nice one. Now you click on the download button there and a download button comes up. Download it to a scrapbook file folder that you already have made with your images and backgrounds in it. So we click on the save. Now it's in a zip file so you need to unzip it using possibly WinZip. And once you've got it un unzipped we go to file and we open Now it's in my my documents and it's in a scrapbook template folder. Let me click on it and open it in, in GIMP. It's in a PNG format so it, of, uh, if there's any transparency in there they should show up. There's your transparencies. They're all nicely cut out for you. So and this, uh, all we need to do now is go and get our images. So we go on to File and Open as a layer. Now I've got my images in another folder. So I need to uh, find my images. Some of them are in Bitmap and some are in... Uh, click on that one, see what I've got. There's a photo of a little girl. Now you can see there it's not going to fit the uh, fit the template so we we need to resize it and move it as well so first I'll move it it's on the temp the top layer so it should move but I'll click the uh, move the active layer button on the radio button and move it into our template hole right the cut out there now I go to my resize tool that's that one there and just resize it Make sure you have the aspect ratio checked and that one there and just resize it to fit that Just make it a little bit bigger Not that much Okay, there's a little bit more to cover on the outside there That might do it If you grab the center you can move it down a fraction. That's better. I don't see any transparency um, checkerboard in the background so I click on scale and because it's a layer you can move it down underneath the, the background layer so you click on the down arrow now it's placed it behind that with a nice picture frame around it you notice it has a little boundary around it that's the layer so if you right click on the on that image and ask for a layer to image size it fixes it all up. It puts the, the background layer to the image size. Now you still have your transparencies there. So we'll go and load another couple of images in there. We go to File and we open as a layer. So we go to my image folder where my images are and click on that one. Okay. Now this one here, I'll, I'll move the um, the top template down underneath it so we can actually see what's happening. We need to act, click the top template to make it active. Now I have this one and I need to place it in one of the other folders. So I'll place it in that particular image, that one there. Now I need to resize it and I just resize it down so it's over the top of the other one. I think that might do it. I'm not quite sure. I'll click on scale and judging by the, the cut out at the top, I go to my move tool. It could be just about right. So I need to move it across a little. Okay, what have we got? Okay. I need to move it across just a little like so. I want the tap in as well. And now I put the uh, that one underneath the layer. 
there it is she's in in there with the uh, she's going to turn the tap on so I need to move it just a fraction so you can see the tap I'll just move it up a little bit over right okay that's not too bad you can see the tap now now once again you right click on it and image to layer size it takes that little boundary away now I need to load another image in there to put the little story together so I go to file and open as a layer go to my image folder once again and it should be that one there okay she's got that little uh, innocent look on her face so once again we need to resize it to the to the to fit the image so we go to resize tool and just resize it down to fit over the top there should be about right okay it's not too bad I'll just go to the move tool and adjust it just a fraction down show her little face and now I click on the top one and merge those layers together right click the top layer and merge visible layers and just click on merge and it brings them all down to one now all the images now are all blended in there and the little story behind what's happening in this uh, format we'll put in some text so we go to our text tool I need to change the color to black and we click in the area and type in some little caption there question and then hit close you can see there that the text is very very small it's mainly because the um, that's a 12 by 12 template so it's quite large so we need to bump the text up so we can actually see it so we just keep hitting that roller and it should be a capital letter there I we'll just click on the text again and come back and change it to a capital letter character I should say capital character and then close okay oh where's my question mark do I lose it oh it's there oh I see it's uh wrapped there we go you can if it does that you just put you click on it and it gives you handles and you move it out so I close hit close and of course uh, the answer is no and then uh, another bit of text in there hit close and then the next down the bottom here it puts another bit of text in there okay and we close that one off and of course you can uh, change the size of the text once again to make it fit or you can move it because it, they're all on separate layers you notice over here in the layers channel they're all on separate layers so I go to my move tool and possibly move it into an area where it can be seen a little bit better okay once again you click on the top layer and merge visible layers and brings all the text layers together now there's our first scrapbook page you could probably put in little bubbles if you wanted to to create uh, bubbles in that format whether like she's saying it speaking and you can make bubbles within uh, speech bubbles within GIMP so I'll show that as well in a moment or two so we'll close that off and we'll uh, you, of course you go and save it you don't lose it but just to show you how big it is and click into the area and it says pixels I pull that 
image down and ask for inches. You can see there it's 12 inches by 12 inches. So that image within there is 12 inches by 12 inches. So those images there are much, uh, almost a 6 by 4. So it's quite a, a big um, scrapbook page, which is not, you normally wouldn't uh, be able to print it out on your home printer, which normally prints A4. But that's your scrapbook page number one. In this part of the tutorial, I'll show you how to put in speech bubbles. We put in first, we make a new layer of full transparency, it default to that. Now I go to my ellipse tool and draw a circle up the top. Now I go to my free select tool and make sure I have this icon here checked. It says add to the current selection. Now with my free select tool I choose once, twice, inside the bubble and then again. You can see how now it's made it in that nice little bubble. Now I'll go over to my colours and I switch my colour to white, go to the bucket fill tool and just fill it with white. I go to select and select none. Now I do need to change my colour back to black, which I do. Click on the little swinger there and then go to the text tool. The text is going to be a little bit too small, so I'll need to bump it up a little bit earlier because we remember we had before in the first part of this tutorial the text was far too small. And I'll pick a, a bold as well, that one there will do. And we'll click in that area. Of course it'll make a separate layer with the text. and hit close once you've got your text in there. Now we need to change, move it up a lot more because it's far too small. Still far too small. That's not too bad now, it fits the bubble. So I need to, uh, I go to my move tool and just move it into the area around about midway. The bubble's a little bit too big for that text but that's just a good idea on what, what to do. To make sure you have that move active layer. Now of course it's the text layer on the top there, you can right click on it and merge that down into that layer. Now we need to put in another part of our uh, text there, of course the answer is going to be no, and I need to put in something a bit bold. I need to put in a quote there, so I need to go and get my free select tool and just sort of draw a bit of a, a jagged edge sort of comment where you're going to be really aggressive on what you say. Now I've selected, I need to go to my colours and choose a colour that uh, probably fits the situation. Let's say go to a bit of a red, not so bright, okay it. And then go to the bucket fill tool and fill that with red. Now we change our colour back to black because we're going to use the text tool. We go to select and select none. And we get our text. And I type in my text. And now I need to make the text fit. Rollers and I bring it down just a fraction so it fits in the that's it. I click on the top layer and merge down and it brings it together. Now I need to put in another speech bubble for her little comment there. So I go to my ellipse tool again and just draw a little bit of a bubble there. Go to my free select tool. Of course that one's already chosen. That's the add to the current selection. Just click inside there inside your bubble, just give it a bit of a expansion and back to the start point. Now we've got it, we change the colour to white. We go to the bucket fill tool and fill it with white. Now I change my colour back to black on that little switch, go to the text tool and type in there some text. And close off the text. 
Now the text is still the same size as the last one I made, so I need to bump it up a little bit on the rollers. And there we have it. Now it's in a separate layer, so I can move it. I'll go to my move tool. It's still checked, move the active layer, so I just move it up into the center a little bit. Now I'll go over to the text in the layers channel, right click on it, click on it, and then merge down. That brings that into that bubble. Now I'll go to my ellipse tool again and finish off the comment. So I draw another bubble there, circle, and I go to my free select tool. It's still picked, the add to the current selection. Click inside there, once again, square, and back to start point. Then you go to the bucket fill tool, change your colour to white, and then fill it with white. Then we go to select and just select none, that turns that off. Change my colour back to black. Go to my text and type in some text and close it off. Once again you go over to the layers channel, right click the top layer. We're finished now, we merge, merge visible layers. We click on that one, now we click on the merge and that brings them all together into one. Now you just go and save that. Now that's the tutorial finish on the using the bubbles within the text. And thank you for watching.